Janice, are you there? At your service, sir. Give me some of that dating foolishness. Will do, sir. But I am not interested in what applies in the mummified halls of academia. I understand I'm not speaking as an academic. PhD, I'm not speaking as an academic. And deeper. I'm talking for the little guy out there who gets his head kicked in and always winds up being the buddy, the big brother, and here is, let's be friends. You want a friend, lady? Get a dog. Okay. And here's the thing. <laughs> Welcome to Manosphere Highlights Daily. Shout out to Mr. Ilunga. I hope I didn't butcher your name. Thank you for sending in this video. It's pure gold. This is an episode from a 90s talk show called Fake Daniels. And they had a PUA, an MRA, and a male ethanist on the show. Check this out. Hello, everyone. I don't know if you noticed by the shots that we're taking, but this is an audience of all women today. We have invited them here for a reason, because we have three men with different points of view. These three men think they know what women think, and today we will find out. Meet Ross Jeffries. He says he got tired of being Mr. Nice Guy and being dumped by women, so he changed his ways, and he wrote a book for other men who feel the same way. It is called How to Get the Women You Desire into Bed. This is Mel Fight. Mel says women say they want a sensitive guy, but the minute men get sensitive, women run the other way. And finally, Bruce Weinstein. Bruce says he is pro-feminist and pro-woman. He thinks men would be a lot better off if they only learned to listen to what women have to say. <laughs> <laughs> this is pure gold. No online dating sites, dating apps, social media, a different era. Can you believe it has only gotten worse since then? For this video, we're going to focus on the PUA, Ross Jeffries. The next video will be about the MRA in the skirt. And you will notice that a lot of things we say today have already been said many, 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 many years ago. It also shows that the men in the manosphere don't share the same perspectives, ideologies, or purposes. This will be our focus in this video. Check this out. Ross, what do women really want? I don't care what they want. I only care what they respond to. See, my focus is a little bit different from your other guests. There's what women say they want, there's what women think they want, and then there's what they actually respond to. I'm not an academic, I'm not a theoretician, I'm interested in what works on the street when it's time to date and mate. And what women actually respond to is not what they say they want. You gotta love the faces of the women in the audience. They look confused like he used some Jedi mind trick on them. Because what he says makes sense. He's only interested in what works. That's why you don't listen to what women say. You look at their actions. What he said about focusing on how women respond is going to be the foundation of this video. So pay attention to the response he's getting from the women in the audience. Let's talk about it. Now it's time for us to get into this and do what we got to do. Because we men ain't we. Yeah. We men ain't we. Yeah. So what do they respond to? They really respond to a guy who's a challenge, a guy who's a question mark a guy who keeps them guessing. You see, in the beginning, the less attractive you are physically, the more you have to rely on your attitude. And that's what I wrote my book for. I wrote my book for the average looking, even ugly guy who goes out there in the real world and tries to be a nice guy, gets his head kicked in. So no more Mr. Nice Guy. You can be pleasant. You see, you, we, we gotta define our terms. By nice, I mean accommodating. When you accommodate, you get what the commode gets. You get the crapola. You have to learn how to say no to a woman. This man said you get the crapola. <laughs> Gold. I like the way he chooses his words because these words have meaning. Not being a quote unquote nice guy doesn't immediately make you a jerk. Being a challenge doesn't necessarily mean you're unpleasant. Challenges can be a lot of fun. This is one of the reasons young men rather invest their time and energy in video games instead of women. Men that are a challenge trigger a response. You can already see the look on these women's faces because he's going against the grain. Let's continue. 
But so, th so this, I guess, attitude is your word. This attitude that you now have is more appealing to women? The attitude is vastly more appealing. Basically, the attitude is, I make no excuses for what I want. And number two, I don't need you. You need me. Now, bear in mind, I don't verbalize it. Exactly. Now, you see, you see this response here. You should never verbalize the attitude. You're you show it in your behavior. You're so, you're <laughs> Point proven. This is pure gold. Women are attracted to confident men that don't need them. But they are not attracted to men that are arrogant. Nobody likes arrogant people. The problem with the quote-unquote nice guy is that he's consistently looking for female validation. He lacks the abundance mindset. Nice guys are considered weak because they have the tendency to prioritize the needs of others over their own. That's why they finish last, because they put themselves in last place, which immediately put them in the friend zone, because women want winners. Winners finish first. That's why women know exactly where the winners are at and are fully aware that winners don't need them. I found that the nice guys who, when I'm on the radio or TV, nice guys call up and go, well, it wouldn't be myself. It's the nice guy who's the phony, who's not being yeah. his real self, because he's afraid he can't do anything. So you're going back to my point, all men are jerks. No, no. And some no, hide no. it. No, no. <laughs> Isn't What you just said is all no, men are sort of no, jerks and some of them try to sugarcoat. No, what I'm saying is, is that what you just is, said? No, what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is I said thank I was gonna you. stay out of it and I can't. I'll what I'm saying is is that there's a massive power imbalance in favor of women when it comes to dating and sex. And women through their behavior, through showing men what they actually respond to, force men to act in a certain way. But let me say, his point is so preposterous. Ever get a shot of this audience. Every woman sitting here is sitting on more power than Con Edison pumps out in 10 years. <laughs> you, you control the access to sex, and that is an incredible amount of power. With great power comes great responsibility. This is exactly why women love to call and hear that men are jerks, because that gives them a pass. You saw the response. Jerks give women a pass for the biggest responsibility they have which is to protect their punani. The responsibility to protect their punani from penetration by a man with wrong intentions. A man who's not willing to commit his protection and resources. Women have been given their punani exactly to the men this man strives to become after being friend zoned and dumped for being too nice because nice guys don't get the punani leaking. Nice guys don't give the punani the right response. Sahara Desert, dry spell. Fast forward 30 years later, women offer men nothing to commit to because they've been giving men access to the punani for peanuts. Just watch Sex and the City from the late 90s to get an idea of how women had no problem with how easily the punani was given to many, 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 many men. Bunch of low quality gatekeepers. This next one minute and a half is pure gold. Pay attention to the response. One second, please. Ross, let me, is, is there a woman in the audience that you'd like to ask out? Pardon me? Is there a woman in the audience you'd like to ask out? I'm booked up for 1993. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. You have a question? Yeah, I'd like to know when is the last time you had a real commitment with a lady? And did she respect how you treated her? I, mean, I cannot hear you one more time. When is the last time you had a real relationship with a lady? What makes you think it's your business? Oh. See? My business? Oh. Is that you well, you're sitting up there, you're sitting up there like right. you know everything about women. And deal with the issues. He well, just wait wait made a, a personal no, attack against Well, hang on a second, me, Ross. I think it is a fair me. question, and I will tell you why I think it why is a fair question, question. Because you wrote this book saying you've got the answers. You know what? At the moment, at the moment, I'm having lots of fun. I don't have a personal commitment to one person. Although I have been with someone I've loved for a long time, me. Let me ask you. <laughs> given, given that, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you care if a woman is satisfied the one that you're with? 
It goes without saying she's going to be satisfied if she's with me. Oh, listen, let me tell you something. I'm serious about one thing. I'm being a little obnoxious to get a response, but I'm serious about one thing. Got it. I honestly believe, I honestly do believe that there's no better way a woman can win spiritually, physically, emotionally than being with me. I really believe that. I really do. You really answer the question. Does it matter to you if the woman is satisfied? Yes. It does matter. Because she's going to come back for more. Of course it matters. It's in my own interest to see that she's satisfied. It's chapter uh, 18 in my book. And it's pathetic. Ross's arrogant attitude works with women. I think it's pathetic. He knows exactly what he's doing, fellas. This is shock marketing. It's a way to stand out from competitors. He creates buzz and gets people talking about him. Andrew Tate, Kevin Samuels, rest in peace, are examples of masters of this strategy. However, it can be a double-edged sword as it may also lead to backlash, negative publicity, and damage your reputation if not handled carefully. This minute and a half, he was just arrogant, pushing people's buttons, and that's exactly the point. He's fully aware of the way women respond to certain behavior. He knows what turns them off. He knows what turns them on. He knows what pisses them off. That's game, fellas. If you're gonna talk to a woman like she's your friend, what do you think is gonna happen? Do not make the mistake of thinking that I enjoy having to behave this way. Simply, women have taught me that this is what they respond to. I used to be nice, I used to be sweet, I used to be sensitive, I used to listen. I dated my left hand when I did that. And now, and now. Man, that's where we working. Protect yourself at all times. This video has officially been highlighted.